Hello everyone, welcome back to the session and we were talking about what happens when water breaks. Uh, we have with us today Dr. Mithali Rathod who is an obstetrician and gynecologist. Uh, she does a lot of online consultations and she's a holistic health practitioner. So let me just try to get, we already have a lot of questions from you guys. So we will try to answer all of them. Uh, in case we have not been able to answer any of your questions or we have missed anything, please feel free uh, to drop us a DM or if you, you can also comment on this uh, live uh, session, we will be posting it uh, on our Instagram uh, feed. Hello, Dr. Mitali, welcome back. <laughs> yeah, let's start with yeah, the first question. So I'm still in the hospital, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no issues. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, I'll just yeah. read the question that I had. What is water breaking yes. during pregnancy? Okay, so as I was telling, imagine that we have a huge balloon, okay? The fetus inside the balloon, that, that balloon itself is a uterus that we have, okay? Inside the balloon, we have a fetus. So inside the uterus, the fetus itself is floating around that is surrounded by so much amount of water that water itself is a, is is nothing more than just a urine that a fetus secretes all throughout the nine months of pregnancy okay so once the labor pain starts and the os starts to open and sometimes even without the opening of an os once the membrane surrounding the fetus ruptures it leaks out that collected urine of nine months. That is what we call as water breaking and into the medical terminology, we call it as leaking. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. you That's so much uh, for that documentary. There was a question from hmm. one of the user right here regarding uh, something. Yeah, I love. Uh, yes. So there was a user by name Deepika. I'm not sure if she has joined. So yes. She had a C-section. Uh, okay. She was two centimeter dilated, but she had an emergency C-section. Okay. Uh, they. Uh, uh, she was told that you know, <clears throat> baby has pooped, so we have to you know do an emergency C-section, and they okay. had to break her water manually. So yeah. her question was: Was there a possibility of vaginal birth in this situation? Okay, so normally vaginal birth happens when the cervix is fully dilated. Full dilatation means the dilatation of 10 centimeters. Okay, so for a primee, that means the first time jisko pregnancy rehti hai, they have normally a duration of dilatation 1 centimeter per hour. If the labor has not induced, then in case of normal vaginal birth, so imagine that from 2 centimeters to 10 centimeters, it usually takes a time of 6 to 7 hours on approximation. So during that time, if by any means her baby swallows all that poop inside the amniotic cavity, which uh, water, se hota hai, that could create hazardous impact on the fetus. So that is why it is advisable to not to wait up to 6-7 hours because later on it could create the pulmonary disturbances for fetus. That is why. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I hope. Uh, okay. Uh, before we move on to our next question, uh, Dr. Mitali, there's another question from uh, one yes. of our viewers. His name is Alia, Alia Sharma. I'm due in January end, and how can I advocate for normal delivery? Since cities mostly go for C-section, how to trust any doctor? <laughs> I but think trust is the first and foremost thing. Whether if you visit a if you visit a, any health coach or any counselor or any even Babaji also, right? Because without trust, there is no relationship that is going to work. So that is the first thing. But if you feel that you have any sort of doubt or something, you can always go out there and ask for a second opinion. Okay, so these two are the basic important things. But imagine that you are going to have a labor into January. So meanwhile, you can take care of your proper rest, proper sleep, proper physical activities, proper nutrition, not only relying only on the iron and calcium pills, but focusing on the overall nutrition to provide that enough uh, and the adequate health to a baby and herself also right there is no sure shots method like you know if you do the three steps 
yoga exercise or some magic potions that will give you a normal vaginal birth that's not how things works every single patient is different every single delivery is different so this is high time that we start believing in the bio individuality right yes right and yeah i just want to add something to what dr mitali said adia like you know uh, you you cannot uh, like you know really have your baby delivered with a doctor whom you don't trust you have to trust exactly. that person because you are kind of like you know that relationship will not at all work if you are not trusting your doctor so if that if you see any issues with your current practitioner i would really advise you to change the practitioner before it is too late and find somebody whom you can trust talk to that person about your wishes and like how you want your birth uh, to progress but everything cannot be predicted as dr mitali said like you know we were answering the first question that we had that there are cases wherein doctors have to take some uh, like you know emergency calls like and they cannot really be predicted so then that's when that element of trust comes into play so you really need to find someone whom you can trust i'm going on to my next question dr mitali uh, so um, i don't know the name of the user but there is no chance of normal delivery if water breaks or how long can we wait after labor pain starts after water break the that's it like okay, so, uh, if you can yeah here. yeah so for the previous answer that we were discussing i would like to add one more point is that if you still have any queries you can always ask your doctor right because why they are so much keen to or why they are you know taking the route of c section and why not the normal vaginal delivery and meanwhile they can also educate themselves right the patient's part yeah and coming back to this question there is no specific definite timeline ki abhi se water break hona shuru hua then we have to you know go for a normal vaginal delivery or c section only in a 1 hour or 2 hour or 3 hours there is no magic number we can wait if the dilatation is proper if the fetal heart rate is proper if we are you know find something fishy like if the dilatation is not up to the mark if the progress is not happening if the descent descent means baby ka head niche ki taraf jana right so if the descent is not happening then we we also have a route of cervical priming which means to make the cervix favorable we do add certain substances that are called as cervi prime gel theek okay? hai so that makes the cervical ripening more efficient and it also induces the contraction that is what we call as labor induction okay so there are two different routes jab tak baby ke heart rate theek hai if the progress is going on uh, if the mother is also very bearing down if there are no other maternal high risk factors like anemia severe preeclampsia gestational diabetes mellitus if every single thing is falling into the normal scenario then we could wait even you know my mother is also a gynecologist and if the things permit she even waits up to 1 to 1 uh, to 3 days yeah i just want to add here my water broke uh, like you know and i actually started having contractions only after 8 to 10 hours uh, there were yeah. some complications with the baby when the baby was born but they were minimal and uh, like the doctors were monitoring so yeah it was fine it was fine in my case i'll move on to the next question up yeah um it's something similar to what you already answered dr mitali so the question is after the water breaks how long before the baby will be born i guess uh, dr mitali has already answered that the next question that we have is is water breaking hurt uh, like i think she means to ask whether it hurts when the water breaks i think I mean, see i am not a mother <laughs> i am not a mother so i am not the best person but depending upon whatever experience i have uh, there are so many women who you know who just wakes up in the morning and they found that everything is wet so they are they themselves are not even aware that the water has broke already okay so i don't think it that is hard. painful but yeah exactly but once the contraction starts then you might feel you know lower abdominal cramps and back pain and little bit heaviness and the presence of the blood stain discharge into your undies and everything yeah yeah so actually i think like the amniotic uh, 
uh, fluid like you know uh, leaking out that yeah. itself is not painful the sac breaking and the uh, fluid leaking out that is not painful yeah next question we have is uh, hello doctor how much water does how, how much of water leaks out i mean I, that's the question okay so at the full term we have approximately 800 ml to 1 liter of fluid surrounded by baby if there is a chances of oligohydramnios yes, which means ke jo liker hota hai that reduces up to the certain levels so to measure that out we have one index that we call it as amniotic fluid index theek hai so if the water is less than 8 cm then we call it consider it as a oligohydramnios yes, jisme teen grades hote hai mild moderate and severe and if the amount of liquor is too much then we have, we call it as a polyhydramnios wo thoda bahut technical ho jayega but normally at a term pregnancy we have approximately 800 to 1 liter of liquor surrounded by baby okay thank you dr mitali the next question i'm actually use uh, reading out the user question uh, like you know the questions from our viewers because uh, like you know then there's a very high chance that we tend to miss these questions so the next one we have is from neelam yeah. power uh, she asks if fibroid is present then is it possible to have a normal vaginal delivery uh that also depends upon the size of the fibroid location of the fibroid and your overall situation okay so there are so many types then usme kya hota hai the fibroid is at the sub serosal level that means it is outside on the surface of the uterus that has potentially no effects on the labor as such okay in that case agar by any means we have to go through an emergency lscs tab humko pata chalta hai that this lady is actually having a fibroid so into those scenarios 100% normal vaginal delivery is possible unless and until it is a fetal indication okay ki baby ke wajah se humko operation karna pade to if this position of the fibroid is you know into the lower uterine segment if that is the position around the cervical area into which we cannot allow a patient to go into normal labor because usme kya hota hai there are higher chances of obstruction and there are higher chances of uh, risk of the postpartum hemorrhage okay there is increased chances of blood loss after the delivery so into which we have to look into the uh, size of the fibroid location of fibroid and then we have to decide accordingly okay thank you dr mitali the next question is from maya oberoi i am due tomorrow and there is no sign of labor yet i am getting little tense please advise currently i am in wait for induction for 7 days past due date if everything is fine please advise okay yeah so i would say first thing first you are going to be a mother soon so don't stress out on this little little things always trust your doctor and keep yourself surrounded by you know your family members that is going to help you the best number 2 would be keep your maternity bag and everything handy third thing is if your due date has passed that doesn't 100% means there is no such blanket statement ki agar aapki date cross ho gayi then you only have to go through induction or there are higher chances of you know like uh, uh, the c section or anything like that there is no blanket statement such always trust your doctor get through ultrasound look for the level of liquor go through the per vaginal examination and see whether the cervix and the os has opened up or not and prepare yourself likewise if you still have any questions you can always ask your doctor yeah the next question we have is from revati gundala and she asks after the water broke by how much time we have to go to the hospital i think uh, you should visit your doctor immediately as early as possible okay because at that point of time you have no idea whether the cervix has opened up or not whether the head the position of the head is where so you know that is important and sometimes in the rare case scenario what happens is that if the position of the fetal is such that into uh, if the fetus is having a transverse position or a breech position uska matlab ye hai ki baby agar aada ya teda hota hai then in rare case scenario with the breakage of water sometimes the umbilical cord also comes out then it would be a, an emergency situation into which that is called as cord prolapse उसमें आपको इमरजेंसी सी सेक्शन के लिए जाना पड़ सकता है 
that is why otherwise there are chances of intrauterine death of the fetus so that is why visit immediately okay the next question we have is from debashree my water broke on my 38 week and i waited for 4 hours for doctor to come to hospital then she did emergency c section as per the report my cervix had closed that time my question is is there any chance of normal delivery yeah so i think the doctor that you are visiting is the best person to answer this question but i am here miles apart still trying to answer is that yes there are chances you can wait if the fetal condition is normal and appropriate fetal heart rate is normal if the contractions are about to start if you do not have any other contradictory factors like high blood pressure unbalanced sugar levels anemia any placental factors then there are 100% chances but if the fetal heart rate are falling into you know very very low levels then that we consider it as a fetal distress so in those case scenarios the to you know for the uh, while considering the survivability of the fetus and to reduce the post uh, post operative neonatal encounters and you know nicu admissions and everything then in those case scenarios it is important to take those immediate decisions thank you dr mitali uh the next question we have is from abhinita i am 32 weeks pregnant and have cholestasis is it mandatory that i will have a free term delivery or there are any chances of delivery at full term so 38 week is itself is considered as a full term only right 32 i guess 32 oh okay yeah 32 is free term yeah, yeah. so yes cholestasis does not equate always you are going to go into the preterm labor okay there are 100% chances that uh, if you take care of the underlying your nutrition and the meals and everything and if the liver factors the liver enzymes and everything are falling into the normal range and if you are not having any viral kind of a hepatitis like hepatitis e that is considered as a very very deathly into the pregnancy situations so if the viral markers are falling into the normal range and if you are not having any hepatitis situation then 100% you can always wait and there you, are medications Dr. available to treat this situation yeah, yeah. yes okay thank you dr mitali yeah there's another uh, question or more of a statement that we have that nowadays doctors just say don't worry about those things we will manage i want to know what to expect during labor uh, like i don't know the name of this viewer but i would say i would strongly suggest you even before dr mitali answers your question that there are so many uh, like you know classes nowadays available which help you prepare for labor okay because labor is considered to be like you know 80 to 90% mental effort and then the remaining part is actually the physical thing that you're doing out there okay so to prepare yourself you can definitely join one of those uh, uh, classes okay there are so many so many out there so many good ones out there who really really yeah. make you understand to expect during labor they talk about the different stages of labor they talk about different pain management uh, techniques that you can uh, use that you can practice beforehand to prepare yourself for the labor uh, dr mitali if you want to add anything to this you can please and i think there are so many good midwives are also available right and there are online classes too so you can always ask questions and always educate yourself regarding the same okay because you know we are surrounded by so many myths regarding the labor like itna zyada pain hoga doctors aise honge you have to bear down you have to keep yourself uh, you know nil by mouth you have to be hungry all the time you have to be thirsty it is going to be very very painful so there are so many misconceptions are there so it is always important to educate yourself and ask questions and not to stress about everything together yeah The next question we have is from Savir. Uh, what's called baby swallowed water? Will it happen before water breaking or after that? Yeah, so that terminology is called as meconium aspiration syndrome. Okay, into which because of any uh, uh, emergency situation, the fetus go the uh, baby inside the uterus goes into the distressful situation. 
एंड बिकॉज ऑफ विच नॉर्मली क्या होता है फीटस पासिस टूल वंस इट कम्स आउट ऑफ द वोम वंस इट गेट डिलीवर्स आउटसाइड द यूट्रस बट इन टू सम वेरी वेरी स्ट्रेसफुल सिचुएशन बेबी पासिस आउट द मेकोनियम दैट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज अ स्टूल ऑफ द फीटस इन सेट द वोम बोडली ओके सो दैट दैट मेकोनियम हैज अ चांसेस टू एंटर इन सेट द फीटस इज रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम थ्रू नोज एंड माउथ and because of which there are higher chances of neonatal pneumonia and if the baby does not gets delivered outside immediately into certain hours there are higher chances of neonatal admission and the fetal distress and the neonatal pneumonia later on so it could happen even prior the rupture of membrane and your doctor could find out by looking and measuring at the fetal heart rate during that time okay thank you dr mitali I didn't get this question, but still I'm just going to read it out. It's from Doctor K. Sal. Mine is eight month. I'm having a fever since three days. I did not. Uh, if you can get anything out of it, Doctor Mitra. So I think uh, abhi dengue bahut chal raha hai. So this is high time you visit your doctor, get yourself tested, and uh, fever itself is a very very risk factor. because uh, you cannot you know uh, consume certain medications by yourself and dengue itself could go into dengue shock syndrome later on so that is why it's important to visit your doctor get those blood tests done and not only relying on the paracetamol just you know just like that from a local pharmacy store okay thank you dr mitali ah uh, this there's one more comment okay i like um I'll just read it out. I don't know if, uh, like, you know, uh, if there's any question in that. It's from K two. Is twins pregnancy means issue in eggs or sperm? Read Ayurvedic book where it is mentioned if family history is not there and there is twin pregnancy, it's issue. Uh, in bracket dosha. No. In eggs or sperm. See, I respect Ayurvedic practitioners and then their line of medi medicine, but. i don't think that having a twins that means you are having any issues with your eggs or sperm <laughs> there is no issue yeah thank you dr mitali ah uh, this this uh, comment is again from dr kesel monte kelsi is safe in 8 month of pregnancy uh, it's up to you dr mitali if you want to answer it i think i should not you know pass on to those blanket statements here because every single case is bio individual you know we have to look into certain lifestyle factors and allergy and you know the case and then in then only we advise certain medications so that is why yeah there's again one question which is very specific to medicine so it's up to you if you want to answer it dr mitali um how to deal with migraine in 17 weeks any medication is diclofenac 50 mg safe i think diclofenac is you know creating highly disturbances into the stomach that creates gastritis okay so uh, later on you might end up with a heartburn and again the pregnancy yeah uh, migraine during the pregnancy so many times it could be because of you know uh, the hypoglycemic situations which means you are avoiding your meals at a very long long interval so that is why that hypoglycemia and falling in the sugar level is also one of the main reasons behind your uh, you know frequent headaches and everything sometimes it could also be because of the salt disturbances and the salt deficiency so that is why i don't think just relying upon a medication is a good you know way to deal with your headache uh, there are multidisciplinary approaches that you should take thank you dr mitali there's one more question from uh, it's from durga does excess physical work can be a cause for c section no <laughs> yeah so yeah uh, basically dr mitali says no so she she says no it 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 can't be like that okay uh, so uh, <laughs> if you want to continue with our set of questions uh, there's one more question is just come in now it's from mallika i'm in ninth month of my second pregnancy i previously had a c section and my doctor is suggesting for c section again at 38 week but i wanted to wait till my ninth month is completed so please tell me 
what should i do should i wait for natural pain or should go according to doctors okay so uh, you know having other pregnancy after the previous history of c section the vaginal birth again is dependent upon so many factors the first would be of course the maternal age second would be whether we have a uh, adequate space in the pelvis or not third would be what was the reason for prior c section okay fourth thing is uh, are there any other fetal or the placental factors sometimes what happens is that the weight of the fetus is so much that the pelvis the passage from which the fetus comes out is inadequate okay so that we call this as a fetal plus uh, pelvic disproportion okay so we have to look into the certain factors beside before deciding कि ये पेशेंट को लेबर में जाने देना चाहिए या नहीं जाने देना चाहिए ओके सो दैट इज वाई यू गो विजिट योर डॉक्टर एंड क्लियरली मैंशन दैट यू विश टू वेट फॉर अप टू नाइन मंथ्स एंड देन सी वॉट दैट डॉक्टर हैज टू से अबाउट योर केस एंड देन एंड देन ओनली यू मेक दैट कॉन्शियस डिसीजन वेदर यू शुड वेट और वेदर यू शुड नॉट वेट थैंक यू डॉक्टर विदर यू वॉन्ट टू Yeah, we are getting so many questions. Okay. Yeah, we actually the enough. questions are continuing, so I don't we think we'll be able yeah. to go the session after two hours. We'll go up to forty minutes. I'm not sure how long, Doctor Mitali. We can hold Doctor Mitali, <laughs> but yes, I want to ask her this. Okay. So, what happens after the water breaks? What happens to the baby after water breaking? Okay. So, first thing first, if the position of fetus is correct, nothing happens to your baby. Okay. <laughs> yeah so but uh, once the water breaks that is also a sign of initiation of labor so that is why it is important to reach to hospital as early as possible and during that time it is important to monitor fetal heart rate baby ke heart rate monitor karna bahut important ho jata hai so that is why nothing happens to your baby in short okay doctor yeah uh, you can ask uh, yeah. Yeah, I am just trying to figure out if we have answered almost all our questions as well in here. Uh, yeah, we have actually. Yeah, I think yeah, we've covered almost everything. So this is just one personal question that I have, Doctor Mitali. Uh, uh, like yeah. as I mentioned uh, earlier as well in the session, my water broke uh, like somewhere around um, eight a.m. in the morning, and uh, my labor started at around uh, almost at around eight p.m. in the night. So it was ten to twelve hour gap. But then yeah, I uh, I reached the hospital and I was admitted in the hospital like you know um, uh, like maybe three four hours after my water broke and everything was like perfectly fine like they were monitoring my baby and uh, baby's heart rate was fine I was doing very well I was like um, completely active and like there was nothing to be worried about. Eight p.m. my uh, contraction started and uh, they were not really heavy so actual like you know. Um, uh, Like painful contractions which I had, or the dilation, uh, that is that's when it's that that's something that started like you know somewhere around one a.m. Okay, so it was almost twenty four hours after my water broke that I delivered my baby. Twenty three mm-hmm. hours after my water broke, after the baby was delivered, ah, uh, there were some complications ah uh, in the baby. Ah, uh, like you know basically ah uh, they. they did uh, they monitored the baby the baby was overall fine like uh, like you know baby was breathing normally crying like properly and like everything else was fine but then there was some issue in the uh, blood like they said that there was some infection because the water had broken uh, like you know a long time back and then like the baby was infected uh, through some bacteria or something hmm. okay uh so uh, like you know is there any time period uh, like say because i was not aware of this particular thing and i really waited uh, like you know 23 hours after my t- water broke so is there any period wherein like you know we need to be aware of that okay don't let uh, like you know the baby stay in you after this period of time uh that can increase any complications in the baby or is it something to be worried about or are these complications also normal yeah so normally what happens is that once the water broke the membrane that separates the cervix and the uterus from vagina 
Okay, so the vagina is the place where all the vaginal microbiome sits normally. Okay, that is what the normal situation is. Once the water broke, that effective protective barrier is lost. So after which the vaginal microbiome are get exposed to the fetus and the inside of the uterus. Okay, the inside cavity of the uterus, to be pre precise. So after approximately twelve hours, there are increased chances of infections. But to prevent that, there are into you know very specific situations. We do give patients the prophylactic antibiotics. Okay, to prevent that endometrial infection, the uterine lining infection, and to prevent the neonatal infections later on also. Okay, the second thing is once the baby deliver after the history of early rupture of membrane, the pediatrician himself or herself also does the blood test. to look into the total count of the uh, baby and meanwhile if the total counts are falling into the higher side of a range then they also give a baby 3 days of antibiotic course so there is no specific scenario but i think 12 hours of leaking itself is a little bit uh, you know relative risk factors for that infection Okay, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mitali. <coughs> This was a lovely session, and we have yeah. continued. One, yeah. Uh, can you ask one question from Dr. Uh, the last one who had fever? No, she has posted again. Yeah, I have lost it. Yeah, I I'm not uh, even reading. I, read I, I think I had that question. question. Yeah, so she has history of fever and cough and cold since three days, and she is having eight months. She is having respiratory issues or something. so i think i think we have answered that already it's important to look into what type of fever you have whether it is a viral fever whether is it is a seasonal flu and then decide accordingly yeah i think yeah yeah we yeah. still have a lot yeah. more questions and uh, um, we are really sorry guys like dr mitali had just given us half an hour and we've already held up for more than 45 minutes yes. now um any of the questions if we have not answered which i'm sure we have not there are a lot of questions which we have missed please feel free to drop us a message uh, either send us a message or we will be sharing this particular live session uh, on our instagram feed you all can even comment down there or you all can even approach dr mitali directly okay and we would be glad to uh, answer to you all thank you so much dr mitali with there you want to add something <coughs> <clears throat> yeah no thank you so much dr mitali for joining us and uh, we can plan another session with you uh, you know and uh, we will forward all the questions across to you and yeah. uh, we will be tagging you so either they can drop us drop the com drop comments for uh, under this video link or they can approach you directly thank you everyone for joining us thank you so much and don't forget to check our pregnancy freebies the link is mentioned in our bio yeah thank you thank so you much so new much mother i happy. hope we will connect super soon yeah okay. thank yeah. you thank you thank you everyone yeah bye bye